Yo, what's going on boys? It's Chino from Rockabout Sound and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to be doing one of the most requested tutorials of all time and that is Getter's remix of Burial Alive's track, Windpipe. Now, this is what the bass sounds like. So obviously, it's really sick and such a, such a sick sound. Go ahead and drop a like and drop that subscribe button as well. Drop a click right there. Um, really just help support the channel and you will also have access to free unlimited tutorials for the rest of your life. Really sick, right? So anyways, do yourself a favor. Drop a like, drop a sub. Back to the tutorial, let's go ahead and initialize the patch. So for this particular bass, we're going to be using ring modulation. I know I haven't used it too much in the past, but for this particular sound, it really creates a nice presence. So oscillator A is going to be our host for the RM. So we could just go to our basic shapes, move the position halfway, which is a square waveform. And this is really just going to be the basis for the sound. And the sound is going to be outputted through this oscillator. So to turn on our RM, we just go to our warp selection. And then we go ahead and go to RM. Turn it up all the way, I know, all the way, 100%. And this is really just going to create create our ring modulation, okay? That's all it takes. You know, ring modulation is a form of amplitude modulation. And as we move further into the sound, you're really going to be able to hear what I mean by that. And I'll point it out to you. So, I'll say to her, B will turn on. And, oh yeah, by the way, just drop this level all the way down so we can turn on our, or our low frequency oscillator number one on here and just kind of make this go down to about 80%. You know, anything above 75% on the levels, okay, because we are going to be using distortion and sometimes intensity of the level can interfere with that. But yeah, that's a different story. So, oscillator B, drop this level first things first, as well as turn up the octave up four. So, as we turn up the octave four, we start to hear a metallic sound. Um, we don't want a metallic sound, okay? So how do we fix that? You hear in the original track, Getters almost sounds like a chord sound. It's really harmonic. So we turn up the semitones up seven. A lot of professionals are using this. Um, they use a lot of the the um, the techniques that I'm going to be using in this video as well. So stay tuned towards the end. So now we're going to go to Spectral Monster Four. And this is going to be a, our waveform. On top of that, we go to our mirror and we just drop the mirror. And basically what the mirror does is it takes half of the waveform inside the window and then it reflects it to the other half of the of the window. And it, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory to be honest. And we just kind of move this up to about 70%. Starting to sound not too good, but if I were to turn this up, as you can hear, we start to hear some soft spots and some really heavier, harder spots. Um, take a listen. And as we move up the scale, the more intense or the faster that this um, that this soft to hard motion gets, and this is a result of the ring modulation that we hear. And as we move all the way closer to the top, the faster it's spinning, it's starting to get so fast that we start to produce that classic ring mod sound that we actually hear within the ring mod filter. But anyways, um, yeah, that's that. I hope you guys kind of get the idea a little bit. Now, um, back into our octave, we can kind of create our shape now. So we're just going to create this kind of form. Make sure it's on envelope, by the way. Rate's going to be at 1 8 Turn on our macro and just make this drop down to 1 4th um, because that's what he does. He modulates the rate throughout the um, throughout the entire song. But anyways, we just kind of create this shape. All right, so now we get into one of the key elements and that is a band reject. Once again, this is a filter or a aspect that a lot of professionals use in these higher pitch sounds. Zomboy, Getter, um, Borgor. Basically, those are the top three right now that are using this technique. Uh, by the way, guys, speaking of these artists, we have a pack launching 
this week or in a couple days and it's going to be so incredible it's in the styles of these artists and it's going to blow every pack that's on the market right now out of the water anyways get excited for it i'm serious guys it's going to be so worth it uh cut off back to the tutorial turn off the cutoff to a little bit less than 50 percent so about 45 turn off the resonance and now we just turn up the width with the low frequency oscillator number one okay sounds good now one thing you're probably noticing is as we move up to this higher octave it starts to sound metallic which getter does not have a metallic sound anywhere in this particular bass throughout the song so what we do to fix that is we just turn down the octave um, in a different layer. That's what I did here. And we just completely lose that whole element or that whole metallic property as a whole. So that's all we do. Anyways, now to get into the effects section. I know I spent a lot of time into the oscillator section. I promise this will be a breeze. Hyper, we're just going to turn on the mixed dimension. That's, you know, you guys know what's up with the hyper dimension. I'm not going to get into that. Now, filter. Uh, another reverb filter I know I've been using a lot lately but they are so effective and they really just help you reach the sound you're looking for um, so anyways we're gonna turn that turn up this cutoff to about what is that four four thousand four hundred and eleven Hertz somewhere around there it doesn't really matter this isn't like a flanger filter where it matters exactly where you put it so just kind of stick it around here <laughs> So we're gonna turn on the, the turn this on to an envelope LFO two, and we're going to turn up the rate to one eighth, and from here we can just kind of go as well into the mix. All we do is we don't want this to be uh, prevalent throughout the entire uh, bass as a whole, so we just kind of turn this up so it's it goes as it follows this ramp. Into the distortion, we can go ahead and turn on a down sampler. And the drive, we're going to turn that down a bit to about like 20, 21%, somewhere around here. And the mix is just going to go down. And the down sampler just adds in an extra crisp to the sound because it is a pretty smooth sound. But, you know, it just helps smooth everything out and crisping it up at the same time. It doesn't want to get soft, okay? That's what I want to say. So into the compressor, turn on a multiband. And you guys are already noticing the difference. Okay, into the EQ. Oh, by the way, guys. Um, yeah, the EQ. I also just wanted to stick this on here. So. Oops. Oh. Where did I have that? Okay. Anyways, into the EQ. We're just going to boost the uh, this middle curve and... Just kind of leave the Q factor alone and then just kind of make the frequency go back. So, okay, not like that too much, but. And that's really all it takes to make the sound. Whoa, one thing we forgot to do, voicing. Legato, turn up that portamento. Okay, something got messed up with the automation here. Here. Let's try this. Okay, that doesn't sound right. I don't know what the heck I did with the LFO speed, but, you know, you guys get the idea. It's the same bass. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you drop a like, drop a sub if you find that sound attractive. But anyways, I'm Shane from Microfile Sound, and I'm signing out.